I've finished up the draft for the first illustration of Peach Tober, so let me show it to you. This is the idea I'm going with. I might adjust the arm a little bit in the final, but I've blocked in the leaves here. They're all going to have this kind of effect along the top. But this is the idea that I'm going with. And this incorporates a few of the prompts for the first six prompts. We have B, sweet, grabbing some grub, and that's the combination. And I know the colour scheme that I want to go for for this, but before I jump into the actual watercolour stage of the illustration, I am going to do some colour comps just so that I have a good idea of the exact pigments that I want to use for this one. But for the basic idea, I want to have a light grey down background. The leaves up here are going to be darker, they're going to be red in order for the yellow of the hive to pop out. And then these are going to be birch trees. The front foreground is going to be yellow and green. And then the background here is going to be a gradient of yellows and browns, I think I'm going to go for. But I'll see that in the colour comp. The bear is a black bear, so that's going to be kind of obvious of how I'm going to paint the bear. So now that I've done this draft, it's time to do the sketch on the watercolour paper. For the watercolour paper, it's a little bit large for my desk space, so I'm going to move this out the way. I'm going to be using the Academy watercolour paper by Bao Hong. This is a block of hot pressed 100% cotton paper and I'm going to do all of the illustrations for Peach Toba in here. The first thing that I need to do now is get the graphite under sketch done on here and I want to make sure that it's easy enough to erase. It's also easy enough to see but I also don't want to dig into the paper when I'm doing this as well. Once that's done there'll be the inking, then I'm going to do colour comps, then I'm going to do the actual painting.
Hello, this is VoiceOver Dana. I hope that you're having a good autumn and October so far, or a good time whenever you're watching this. You can see me starting the inking process now. I recorded the inking in real time just so you can see how I'm doing the mark making a little bit more clearly. I'm using a Kuretake Bimoji brush pen and it is the tip that is short and felt like. It's got some flexibility to it but it's still a felt nib. It's not like a proper brush nib. The vast majority of the inking was done with this pen though I did add some of the background in with a 0.2 millimeter fine liner which you'll see at some point in this. I went with that just to really push the background into the background rather than having the thicker lines from this brush pen. I'm still getting used to handling this brush pen in comparison to the other ones I normally use. It's got a slightly different grip to it and it's affecting how easily I like move it around to create different line weights so I'm still getting used to it and hopefully this challenge helps me with that as well. <laughs> I do find the grip very comfortable to hold though, it's got a kind of squishy feeling to holding it, kind of like a silicone grip and it's a little bit thicker than other pens that I use around that grip as well which in some, some cases in some pens I like that and it helps with things like hand fatigue and gripping the pen and hand pain and things like that and preventing hand pain but in other cases some pens it makes it worse and I don't know if it's just because some thicknesses are better than others when it comes to the grip or if it's because of the weight of the pen sometimes does better on a thinner pen or a thicker pen and things like that but I do find that um, sometimes some of the pens and pencils I use I prefer to be really really thin and then sometimes I prefer the really thick ones so I guess there's all sorts of different factors involved in that but I'm starting to find stuff that works well for me now but I am also experimenting like with this pen here. I'm going to be doing a video probably after Peachtober talking about why I've been trying out this pen in comparison to the other brush pens I use like the Unipin brush pen which is also a felt nib and I'll go over some of the inking supplies I use, how I'm finding this pen and everything like that once Peachtober's over probably. Even though I was still getting used to this pen at the time it was a very pleasant experience on the paper that I'm using. I'm using the Baohong Academy watercolour paper. It's 100% cotton and it's hot press, which means that it's a smoother surface than cold press or rough. And typically you want to go with hot press for doing ink. You can get away with it on cold press as well, which I do sometimes if I want there to be more texture in the watercolour itself. Like when I did Funguary, I was using cold press paper, but in this case, for Peachtober, I'm using hot press and pens just generally glide over the surface, but some ink pens work better than others on different kinds of paper, and I didn't have any problem with this pen on this paper. It was a pleasant experience, and another nice thing about doing this illustration as well is that I'm working a little bit larger than I normally do for traditional illustrations. I normally work a little bit smaller when I'm inking traditionally, around a 5 size, maybe like at maximum 6 by 8 inches, and then this is 10 by 7, so it's a little bit larger. We're not quite getting up to A4, but a little bit larger. And it just meant that I could like pull my lines from my shoulder to create like really long lines, especially for like the bare arm here and some of the other areas of the bear. And I didn't find it too intimidating working a little bit larger. It's not like a massive step up. It's not like I was suddenly doing 11 by 16 
shops or something like that but it was a little bit of a step up in comparison to the size I normally ink at and I've been enjoying it so far. I've not started sketching out the finished sketch for next week yet but I'm hoping that I keep having fun <laughs> this size for the rest of Peachtober like I have been for this one. I really like how that arm came out. I feel like I simplified the pose of it and also the like pe claws peeking out. I felt like it was really, that was a particularly uh, enjoyable moment in inking for me and simplifying the shapes down. I also just enjoyed inking the bear in general. I had fun inking the leaves as well because especially with the bush it's a very um, spontaneous almost way of inking and I usually decide on a particular pattern that I'm going for for example if you see the background block of leaves that were done in the micron and then the foreground leaves of the tree at the top and then compare it to the uh, leaves of the bush in the foreground all three of those have like a, a different pattern that I was following essentially so once I kind of decide the pattern of the thing I'm drawing when it comes to leaves I can kind of just intuitively move my brush or pen around and it's quite a free flow process and it's quite uh, relaxing really to ink leaves in from the distance and I do want to try and improve though at drawing leaves and things like that. When I was doing this illustration I did simplify down the foliage quite a bit. I just had the outward line work and then left the rest of the detailing to the watercolour and colour pencil so I made them quite flat in a way. And I do want to experiment a bit in, in developing my style when it comes to um, foliage and trees, bushes, things like that with how much detail and simplification I want to put in the block of leaves itself as well. I have experimented in the past with it a little bit but I definitely want to dive back into that a bit more. So if I do more foliage during Peachtober, that might be one of my focuses in a next illustration, for sure. Now that I'm moving on to doing the watercolours in the footage you're watching, I will try to remember which pigments I was using. So for the background that you're seeing me paint here, I was using a mixture of yellows, very yellow-green greens, and burnt sienna. So I believe everything that I used in this was burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit of azo green, and a little bit of azo yellow, I want to say. And in some places there might have been a touch of viridian. For the leaves, I used depending on the mixture, either PV19 quinacridone rose, transparent pyrrole orange, the warm yellow on my palette, which escapes me right now, I think it's azo orange, and red orange from my micro portable painter palette, and I think that was everything for the reds and oranges in these leaves. Later on I go in and add more texture and colour gradients with colour color pencil for the oranges and reds. For the trunk of the birch tree I was using a grey mix of ultramarine, indenthrone blue, burnt umber and burnt sienna depending on the kind of grey or blue that I wanted. I started with a kind of neutral grey, slightly more blue leaning, 
and then later on I went in with a little bit more blue, blue grey, just to add in some slight differences in tone. And that was the pretty much all I did for the birch tree. And then for the foreground bushes, I used a more green heavy mixture and I also added in more obvious colour variation. So I used more viridian this time, which is a granulating green. And I used more saturated mixes of the viridian, the yellows I mentioned earlier, the burnt sienna. I believe I used a tiny little bit of brown red as well. So it was pretty much just different proportions of the background mixes to make the foreground bushes. And then you can see me going in adding in the trunks for the background here. And for that I was just using again the similar greys that I was using for the birch tree. And finally the mixture that I used for the bear itself was a mixture of ultramarine and bloodstone genuine and both of those are heavy granulating heavily granulating especially the bloodstone i got lots of really interesting granulating effects by using those two together the camera picks up the bear as being very blue and that's true of both the video footage and the photos that i've done of the bear but it doesn't look as blue in person it looks a little bit more like what you're seeing on camera now, but as you can see, you can see the ultramarine and the burnt, not burnt, I was going to say burnt sienna, but it's not what I was using, it was bloodstone. So you can see the bloodstone and ultramarine starting to separate, and it looks very obviously blue, the separation in the footage, but it's not as saturated and apparent in person. It's still obviously ultramarine if you're looking up close, but it's not like electric blue. Once the watercolors were dry, I went in with color pencil to add some gradiating effects on top, especially for the leaves in the background and foreground and midground as well. And I varied the color so you can see me using a red tone there, but I used oranges, reds, and browns in the red leaves and orange leaves. And in the background here, you can see me using Indenthorn blue. I was using polychromos color pencils for these, which are my preferred colored pencils, especially when I'm layering on top of watercolor. I do like Prismacolor pencils, but those tend to be a lot creamier and lay down a lot more pigment, which isn't necessarily how I want to layer on top of watercolor when I'm doing this kind of effect. I also used colour a pencil to add in some light and shadow on the bear because I didn't want to go in with any other watercolour layers on top of the granulating layer I'd, do I'd done because I tend to find with granulating layers, if you add layers on top of it, it can disturb the granulation underneath and it can end up not looking as nice texturally, um, especially depending on the pigment, pigments, pigments, <laughs> pigments you're using, it can lift very easily as well. So ultramarine tends to lift very easily. So I didn't want to disturb the layer and I decided to do any further shading and also lightening of areas with color pencil instead. One of the things that I'm going to take away from the experience of this is that while I love the granulating effect I got from the mix on the bear, and even though it doesn't look as blue in person, I do feel like I would have knocked back the blue a little bit more by adding in a burnt sienna in with the mix as well. So having the bloodstone, burnt sienna and ultramarine, I think would have just knocked back the blue a little bit further, especially on camera. But I do love the effect and the granulation that I obtained with the mixture. And I haven't used Bloodstone in a while. I used to use it a fair amount, especially for its granulating effects in producing textures on things like rocks, because it's a very, very dark and dull brown. It's almost like a sepia tone heading towards a black, but not quite a black. And I also have Luna Black as well, which 
are also heavily granulates but i do find that luna black granulates a lot more than the bloodstone does and it's a very different granulating effect at the moment i just have the bloodstone on my palette i don't have the luna black on any of my palettes i do have a half pan of it that's in one of my watercolor boxes somewhere but it's um it's not on my main poured out palettes for the shadows here you can see me going in with the indian throne blue again and then layering on top just pure black pencil so i was using just indian throne and black for the shadows and then i lightened a few areas with white as well i find the white Pe pencil by Polychromos to be more useful for slightly transparent whites. It's not com it's not really really opaque like some other color pencils can be with their whites. So for example, uh, Prismacolor. And in this case, I feel like it worked well. I didn't want it to completely take away the colors underneath. I just wanted to lighten up that cheek a little bit and separate it from the rest of the dark fur effect around the neck and I feel like the combination of using colour pencil on top of the granulation worked really well and it's something that I want to explore a lot more in the future. I do feel like it's a good combination because again it doesn't move the granulating texture underneath like it can if you use another watercolor layer on top so it's something i would like to explore a little bit more in the future i don't know if i'll do it for other peach toba illustrations yet but we shall see it's something i'd like to explore anyway and i'll make a note of it in my studio sketchbook notebook book book looking on to the next peach toba illustration that I'm going to be doing. The next words are from the top of my head. Crater, dream, blue, pencil, nest, and something else. I can't remember the other one, but that's what I have to work with. I have an idea in my mind. I've thumbnailed it out a little bit, so I'm going to be diving into the drafting of some rough sketches and then a final sketch and then continuing this process again for you. I do have an idea for some different effects that I'm going to be doing with the watercolours and ink next time so we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure that I'm going to do animals for all of them like I did with Funguary. I'm definitely going to involve animals but I'd also like to involve some human characters as well. We'll see what ends up working out with the prompts and the ideas I come up with, but I'm definitely interested in changing up the subject matter a little bit of each of the illustrations. If you've been joining in any of the art challenges this October, be it Peachtober, Inktober, Drawtober, any of the Tobas, let me know in the comments how that's been going for you and what you've been up to and how you're approaching it as well. Are you doing it daily? Are you doing it weekly? Are you doing however many you fancy? Let me know. And if you haven't been joining in, let me know how you've been enjoying watching everyone creating what they've been creating as well. Here's some little close-ups of the final illustration and some of the textures up close as well. I hope that you enjoy this video. It's been a bit of a longer one, but if you like this length, let me know and then I might make the next one around this long as well. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!